today with Alex Frankel, the founder of Calm.ai. Alex, thank you so much for joining us. Um, my pleasure. I'm happy to be here. Now, for those of uh, our audience members who are not too familiar with Kai, am I pronouncing that correctly? Yeah, it's Kai. It's very, very simple. Kai.ai. I like the name. Why don't we start with that? Um, what was the inspiration behind starting Kai.ai and how does the name tie in as well? So, uh, my background is in psychology. I majored in clinical psychology. And after practicing for a few years uh, in school and in a private clinic and teaching, I started my first uh, tech startup, almost by mistake. Uh, and Kai is my second one. So, in many ways, it's going back to my origins, life mission, trying to help people with emotional well being and mental health. Uh, and Kai is a personal companion powered by AI focusing on Gen Zers and supporting their uh, well-being and mental health. And the name Kai has so much so much good uh, meanings in many different languages. Uh, in many languages it's part of uh, a voyage and growth and uh, evolvement. Um, and each uh, Kaier has their own Kai. So for some of our uh, customers, Kai is a female, and for others it's a male. So the name provides the, the ability to both do something good, but also allow each uh, person to select their own uh, image uh, of Kai. Oh, terrific mission. Now, I imagine that this must have been really transforming in the lives of many. Are there some milestone experiences that you would say have really um, uh, been notable along the journey with Kai? Yeah, so um, I, I think that it's being in tech for the last decade sounds like you've me learn a lot about what does it take to build a successful company and a product that is used by millions of people. Uh, before starting Kai, after my first startup, I served as a VP product for companies like Get, which is a Uber lift competitor around in Tel Aviv. And being part of the Tel Aviv startup ecosystem really allowed me to see global, very, very successful companies. And when we started Kai, we, we were able to build this unique team. Part of the team comes from psychology and studied clinical uh, psychology, psychiatry, therapists. And part of the team comes with a lot of tech background, so building backends and infrastructure and technology that can support millions of people. So that was very, very important uh, in getting to a point where we can build something like I. It's definitely a very interesting crossover um, in the industries. Now, before we started, uh, we were chatting before the show about the um, infrastructure for this kind of innovation in Israel. I'd love to hear more about that. So, Kai is a US company, but our R&D center, center is in Tel Aviv. And Israel is really amazing with the amount of startups, the amount of new unicorns, the amount of VCs, uh, and so much talent, uh, especially in uh, R&D. But today, not only in R&D, and because it's so small, it allows this uh, deep network where everyone knows everyone and we can more scale very very fast with talent and with smart uh, people that have experience in building real uh, technology and real products. This allows us to uh, be in the market in the US but at the same time uh, interact and execute very very quickly uh, on the technology side. That's really interesting and kind of fitting since we're here at a networking event, yeah. Collision, the tech yeah. conference. And that brings me to my next question. Are there any particular partnerships that you found most constructive in building the success of Cotton Yeah, so for us, I think it's always about the talent and finding amazing people that can teach us new things and can help us uh, grow. So uh, part of the team is in Israel that we have a large team in the Philippines that helps with training and uh, AI making it better. We have now a small team in the US that helps with our community growth. Kai has more than 35,000 members in its community and grows very, very rapidly. And the same is true for storytelling and marketing. So talent is always is always an important part of building the networks and then being an early stage startup, we're always speaking with uh, 
you see is that investors and publishers that were uh, well funded with uh, a large, uh, rapidly growing company. So that's also very important. And then in the conference, uh, meeting the other uh, healthcare AI companies uh, is always a way to learn and to grow on that sort of That's what we're here. Sounds like a solid plan. And for the rapid growth of that kindness, are there any ways of reaching out to the consumer that you found in particular with Amazon? So, because our focus is on Gen Zers, the way they use technology is very, very different. What we discover that we have today uh, more than 100,000 uh, active guys, uh, members. Uh, what we discovered is that uh, they don't uh, follow ads or uh, that they, they would share with each other. Um, they become a part of this uh, community and support each other and will uh, share uh, kindness and uh, practice together. So that's very, very interesting. And Kai is very unique because uh, the way it works is you don't need to install anything, you don't need to download an app, you go to the app store. Kai works in messaging, so you meet uh, the users wherever they are already in their daily life. So on WhatsApp, on Apple Messages, on Discord, which is huge and going rapidly, on Telegram, this makes Sky very, very unique compared to other companies in this mental health uh, space. What is so social edge? Um, would you say that is one competitive edge that you do have over similar services out there? Yeah, for sure, for sure. So what we discovered, uh, especially with Gen Zers, is they uh, don't trust adults as we used to trust them. They wouldn't like have an open conversation video about their emotional challenges, but they trust the technology. Because they know Kai is a machine, they will feel less shame. They will uh, share deeper. They will feel very, very comfortable in this asynchronic uh, interaction uh, with Kai. And, and this really uh, drives uh, their behavior and their ability to actually receive support and receive psychoeducation in a very different and unique way. What a terrific supportive service. Yes. Now, a lot of listeners are probably wondering, with all the challenges that come up, trying to build a company to this space, are there any that you have experienced about any methods of overcoming things that you might want to share? Yeah, so I think that especially working with younger entrepreneurs and like sometimes like providing mentorship, many young entrepreneurs think that it's all about the IP or about the product, the solution, the technology, and I find it like very uh, challenging to like keep saying hey, it's not about the solution, it's always, always about the team, about the people that are starting building this company and having people that each one of them can drive a different area of the company. So I have two amazing co-founders who can help out with the deep engineering experience and he managed large teams and he's very very good in team building and leadership and making sure that uh, the team works in an actual way. That's very important. And my other co-founder is the uh, major in clinical psychology and he's a serial entrepreneur. His expertise is in growth, uh, so he's responsible for build, building this amazing community and a large user base, uh, tens of thousands of people that interact with Sky constantly. And having then other uh, important team members makes all the difference uh, because at the end of the day, it's not about the product or the solution, it's about building a healthy company that can scale and more and support millions of people to do. Strategic teamwork. Yeah. It sounds like this company has amazing leadership. Um, is there any advice you'd like to give beyond that, or um, even before we get to any advice, is there anything that uh, users can expect in the near future? So the way to see the future is everyone, everyone will have a personal companion powered by AI. And it doesn't make sense that uh, the cost of OG or therapies are so high, it can be $200 an hour, and so many people can't afford them. Uh, and it didn't evolve uh, over the last few decades. The only thing that happened in mental health is instead of meeting physically in the clinic, you can meet on Zoom, uh, and that's not enough. That's not enough. So uh, I really see through uh, leveraging AI and machine learning this ability to provide tools and support on a much larger scale 
I see the technology improving all the time. And I see a vision where voice will be very, very important. You will be able to make a conversation with your personal companion. You will be able to take it with you everywhere. So the companion will be part of the metaverse and you will be able to interact with it wherever you are your daily activities. That's part of our vision. Okay, and now I'm just thinking of all, all the applications. I'm thinking maybe it's not just for teens. Is this also intended maybe for younger children? Yeah, so we're super obsessed with this age group because their pain is so tremendous. Uh, according to uh, a last like, CDC research, one out of three teenagers were experiencing with anxiety or depression this year. Almost one out of two reports feeling sadness or helplessness. Um, and with girls, it's even higher. Rates of visiting emergency room uh, because of self harm or suicide attempts is growing rapidly. And we see a huge, huge need uh, for them. The way Thai works makes so much sense for them because they're constantly on messaging. They're uh, not speaking uh, with adults. Many times they wouldn't share uh, that they have a need or they feel that something is wrong. But with technology, they will be very, very open and they will be very communicative. Uh, and this is a big reason for us to assess uh, supporting them. And yes, like in the long term future, we see Kai working for other uh, demographics and other audiences, other people and, and different ages. But our only focus right now is only uh, on the teenage adolescents group. Supporting other languages, making Kai work in other countries uh, is a big problem for us, especially. That makes a lot of sense. Now, for anyone hoping to achieve similar success, we have a lot of young listeners as well, as well as um, adults who are working in achieving their dreams right now. Is there anything that you might recommend as an experience? Maybe it's a hobby, maybe it's a pastime, maybe it's an educational route for younger or more mature listeners. Yeah, yeah, so I have like two recommendations. Uh, one is uh, Never stop learning and be curious and read a lot and uh, make sure that you grow your um, toolbox and your skill set. Uh, make sure that you're able to do things hands on. And the best way to learn, just try. Try. Try to build something. Try to write something. Try to create uh, a platform uh, for yourself initially. So that's one thing. Learn build things and so on. And the other one is uh, network, meet interesting people, make sure that uh, you build your connections and uh, you surround yourself with people that have the same dream, like becoming entrepreneurs, building their own uh, company. So that would be my two, uh, two tips for young entrepreneurs. Well, that is terrific advice. Thank you for sharing that answer. Now, is there anything else you'd like to share with our listeners before we close off? Yeah, I think that like, for me, uh, a big part of the magic is uh, really something that anyone can try. Or I would ask anyone to go try the AI and just like, try it and share your feedback. Because every uh, person that uses or interacts with AI helps us make it better and more accurate. So that would be my biggest uh, request. Share your feedback, try it, uh, let's make it better. Join this important uh, mission. I'll vouch for that. And how can our listeners get access to Kai? Do they download the app or go online? Yeah, so there is no need to download anything. You just go on the website, kai.ai, and you connect. You choose your favorite messenger and uh, you start the interaction with Kai. Kai would uh, take you by the hand and help you do a uh, happiness uh, quiz. We give you your initial baseline happiness score and it will help you retake it over time and you can see the data. That's the best way. You can follow Kai on uh, Twitter or Instagram. Uh, so that's uh, an option as well. So convenient and accessible. Thank you so much for joining us today, Alex. Thank you. And uh, I believe your co founder Ziz is here as well. Thank you for joining us. Ziz. It's been an absolute pleasure. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for taking the time. Thank you.